Hello and welcome. About two years ago I made this project sketch and I'm finally getting around to work on it. As a base I'll be using this second hand Draculaura doll from the Monster High line, which I stripped down a to the base a while back. The dress is from Claudine, which I used in my last doll repaint. I'm going to start with cutting out the eyes with a scarpel so I can add in insert clay eyes later on. Once they are cut out, I'm going ahead and cut loose the scalp, so I can access the inside of the head easier later in the project. Next up with a scarpel and a foam nail file, I remove some of the seam lines and scuffs. Starting on rerouting the head, which I've never done before, I'll be using some Mr. Hair Fiber for my mother's stash and a DIY rerouting tool. The tool is made out of a skinny embroidery needle with the eye cut at an angle that's jammed into a broken scarpel handle. I take a piece of hair fiber, fold it in half, slide it into the rerouting tool and stab it into the head. 
Now I just have to repeat that until I have a full head of hair. working with the mystery hair fiber, the texture changed. I'm just hoping at this point I can still style it. Then I go ahead and glue the hair plugs in place with a non-water soluble glue. Using chalk pastels, I start blushing the body. This helps give the plastic some variation and helps with making it look more alive. When I'm done with the first layer of blushing, it's time for the first layer of Mr. Super Clear Matte Sealant. When using this stuff, you want to do it in a well-ventilated area and wear a mask. You don't want to breathe in this stuff. One of the design elements of this project are her tattoos. I do enjoy drawing tattoos from time to time, but these will be way too large for doll size. I did some tests on my hand to see what would be a possibility for me to do on that scale. To sketch up the tattoos, I will be using a watercolor pencil in a color close to the skin. 
so when I make a mistake, it's easier to correct. Once they are all sketched up, I blush the body once more, then using a shimmering powder, I dust the body to give it a slight glow, helping giving that liveliness to the skin, before sealing it again. While waiting for the sealant to dry, I paint some eye blanks made out of polymer clay. I first lay down a layer of sparkling green paint. Once that base layer is dry, I dab in the pupil with black acrylic paint. Then, using liquid gel Fimo, I finish off the eyes. Starting on the tattoos, I use a black watercolor pencil to start darkening the sketches I made earlier. The first tattoo design I'll be working on is a small black cat, like a tiny living shadow. For the other arm, I'm going to spiral a vine from the wrist up the arm. The next tattoo is going to be a classic dagger with some roses. I really liked how the design turned but sadly it's going to get covered on later on.
Moving on to the lower shin, I'm going to draw a little snake friend spiraling down to the ankle. I also did one large tattoo on the other leg, of a lantern with a wolf spirit and the simplistic stars. I originally planned on doing more tattoos, but ended up settling on just these. While waiting on the sealant to dry, I made some accessories out of polymer clay. Firstly, some tiny raven skulls for earrings. Some shoe bases. and baked the eyes one final time before giving it a layer of gloss varnish to give it that glass-eyed look. Then, using a hairdryer on the hottest setting, I heat the vinyl head so it becomes squishy so it's easier to reunite it with the body. Once the hair is masked off with some scrap fabric, and the body wrapped up in some bubble wrap to protect the work I've done so far. Using chalk pastels, I started blushing the head to give it some definition.
Once the layer of sealant is dry, I'm going to start on the makeup. Using a needle eraser, I can lift away any pigment and sharpen the lines. With the pastel layer done, I can use watercolor pencils to deepen the colors and hatch in the eyebrows. Using a black pencil, I draw in the lower lashes and a tiny heart on the left eye. As a final touch, I add a layer of shimmering eyeshadow on top to give it a slight sheen.
once the final layer of sealant is dry, it's time to unwrap the doll and for the first time see it all together. To finish the face, I'm going to cut some false lashes to size and glue them in place. For the eyes, I'm going to use sticky tack to hold them in place. Using Vallejo gloss varnish, I add a layer of gloss to the lips, giving that extra bit of liveliness. Now, let's get started on her outfit. I have some of this red velvet I want to make a cape out of. And I also have a bit of this sheer knitted fabric and other little bits and bobbles. At this point of the project, I do not have a clear idea. So, I took one thing at a time and worked from there. Firstly, using some scrap fake leather, gold embroidery thread and shoe bases, I made some high heeled boots. With the red velvet, I made a half silver cape with a black cotton lining using a small safety pin as closure. For her satchel, I dyed a round piece of scrap leather and punched holes all around. Then, cutting a piece of round leather, weaving it in between and around, becoming both the closure and the shoulder strap.
also made a little charm for the satchel. This was made with some metal wire, a tiny piece of malachite and a small love heart charm. Now, for the doll stand, I already started painting it a while back. I start with covering the bottom plate with glue and covering that with lichen and moss to make it mirror the look of the forest floor. I thought she needed a journal, so I made her one. It's the smallest book I've found to date. I used some small pictures and filled half of it with text to make it look used. To avoid the journal to become too bulky, I glued the cover straight on instead of folding it over the edges as one would do on a normal sized book. The last clothing piece I made was the sheer top with three quarter sleeves. I also made a few more jewelry pieces. Firstly, a necklace with a matching bracelet and a bead bracelet in an amber color. Now, all of the pieces are made and the project is complete. It's time to give the doll a name. I think Hellebore, after the flower that blooms in the middle of winter, would be fitting. A beautiful flower, yet poisonous. I think it's a good match.